concept four, notes for honors on genetic engineering, which is the process of replacing specific genes in an organism in order to ensure that the organism expresses a specific desired trait. So we're going to take genes usually from one organism and place them into another, sometimes manually, sometimes just through forcing different things to um, mate. And this can only occur, though, if we know where genes are on certain chromosomes. We know that, though, because of gene maps, which are the locations of genes on chromosomes, as well as genomes, which are just all the genetic material in an organism. And in 1990, the Human Genome Project began, and it mapped the DNA sequence of human genes. And 3.3 billion nucleotides were sequenced, and the project was completed in 2003. So because of this, we're able to know so much more about genetic engineering. We're going to talk through five types of genetic engineering and the benefits and drawbacks. So first, cloning, which is taking, is making an identical copy of a gene or even an entire organism like Dolly here. And this may occur naturally or it could be engineered. And it usually occurs by nuclear transfer, which is we introduce a nucleus from a body cell into an egg cell to generate an organism identical to the nucleus of the donor. And this is how they did Dolly the sheep in 96. But benefits can be organ transplants and, and, you know, saving endangered species. But the drawback is, like Dolly, you can have serious genetic disorders and health problems. Another type of genetic engineering is gene therapy. So inserting a normal gene where a gene is absent or abnormal. And the inserted gene could then make the correct protein and eliminate the cause of the disorder. The bad news, though, is it ha would have limited success because hosts often reject the injected DNA. And it only really works best if it's a gene like cystic fibrosis where there's only one protein that's messed up or missing. Um, in cystic fibrosis, that's the CFTR gene. Um, if it's a, gene, it's a disease caused by multiple genes being messed up, this would be more and more complicated. Complicated cells that have the potential to become anything. Um, they can replace tissue that's deficient due to disease or damage. But the problem is they're limited in availability because they're mainly found in embryos as well as adult bone marrow. Selective breeding. This is artificially breeding organisms with a desired trait. Almost all domesticated animals, so your pets, as well as crops, the food you eat, are the result of selective breeding. Inbreeding is a problem of this when we start breeding individuals that are too closely related. The benefit of selective breeding is we get an offspring that are stronger or have better traits. Drawback is there can be complications, especially if the parents are very similar. Hybridization is breeding organisms that show two traits in order to produce offspring that express both traits. And this happens between different species. Benefit is the offspring are stronger and they're more fit. The drawback is this is usually pretty expensive and it's also a very unnatural process. Making this liger from a lion and tiger is not a natural process at all. Then gel electrophoresis is kind of random, but it's a lab method that allows scientists to separate DNA, RNA, and proteins based on their size. And we can take DNA from a crime scene and compare it to DNA of different suspects using this method to see where the bars match up. Um, and this is, I think, related to genetic engineering because, again, we're talking about manipulating genes and the locations of genes and how that matters. Um, so I think this is a pretty cool process. Now, there's some societal impacts of genetic engineering, though, that are positive. We've developed plants that are natural insecticides, that are high in protein, that spoil more slowly, and animals that are bigger and faster and resistant to disease. Um, there's bacteria that um, produce human insulin and human growth hormone, and we've made transplant copies of normal genes into the cells of people who are suffering from genetically carried diseases. So there's a lot of great impacts, but there's also some negative ones, which we're going to explore together in class.